What's up, everybody? It's Soren Baker here on Unique Access, and today we're joined by Jail Felony. What's up? What's up? AKA James Savage. <laughs> yeah. Because J James Savage, AKA Jail Felony, has a new project, the Broken Ground movie and album. Mm -hmm. If you guys haven't checked it out, please be sure to do that. And we're going to be talking about that a lot today. Yeah. But of course, I've been knowing J.O. since basically the beginning of his career. Yes, sir. And we got to, uh, you know, revisit a lot of things and talk about stuff so people, when we get to the Broken Ground stuff, people have a better appreciation of mm -hmm. the uh, amazing new artist you are today. That's so, J.O., a lot of people, I think, obviously know you from San Diego, mm -hmm. but I wanted you to talk about being originally from Virginia yeah. and how being in Virginia and then moving to San Diego, how those two different worlds mm -hmm. really affected and shaped who you are as a person. Oh, uh, man, it was crazy, man, because um, I still, uh, my brother actually still lives in Virginia right now, and um, they basically just tore down uh, the projects where, you know, where I was, you know, born at. Mm -hmm. and, and he sent me a picture of the, of the tree I used to hop over and shit, and, and, <laughs> and he went inside the pad and took pictures of it. Mm. And um, I just, you know, that shit bring back a lot of memories, and I was gonna, um, you know, make a film about my childhood there, mm. you know what I'm saying? So I told him to make sure he took pictures of that because I wanted to um, remake that actual, how, how it looked, right, right. you know what I mean? So I'm glad he did that. Yeah, man, it, it was it was it was real a real rough area where I was. You know what I'm saying? Like um, I used to just see motherfuckers getting shot all the time and people shooting up drugs. And my my brothers kind of ran the shit, so nobody fuck with me. You know what I'm saying? But that helps. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I seen a lot of uh, a lot of fucking murder and and, um, and and just a lot of fucking death and violence at a young age. And and before I even knew anything about gang banging or any of that shit, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? It was just a, um, like kind of like Baltimore and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah. like a real rough um, a real rough area. And it's kind of crazy that I, I lived in that shit, and then I get I go to school like about three miles away, and it's a whole different kind of energy. You know what right. I'm saying? So um, I don't know, this shit was crazy. And then the way I got to San Diego was like I kind of didn't have a choice, like fucking um, like a house caught on fire and shit, that type of shit. Yeah. And it was funny, my mom and my grandma was outside, the heater fucking caught on fire to the goddamn curtains. Hmm. And me and my little niece was in the house and fucking, you know, you know, I was a fucking kid, but I wasn't scared of fire because I used to set fires all the fucking time. So. Yeah. I was just like, just grab my niece and get the fuck out the house. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> fuck this shit. Right. So that's what happened. Fucking house burnt up. We had to go to the fucking Red Cross for like three days. And then we went, came to California. You know what I'm saying? So it seemed like it was meant for me to be here. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And then and, um, what made your mom pick San Diego? Uh, my sister was already living out there. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And um you know, so we came out here with my sister, you know what I'm saying? And then, um, you know, I was going to school and uh, I really was tripping that what was different from the East Coast was the fucking schools on the East Coast are all inside. Like, mm. you don't have oh, no, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, you yeah. don't fucking go outside to go to, to another anything. class. Except recess. Yeah, you know what I'm That's saying? That's it. So it was so fucking <laughs> different for me when I was in San Diego and I was like going to another class outside and walking to this other class. I was like, damn, this shit cracking. Mm. This bitches, the teachers look good and shit. I'm like, damn, it's cool as the shit out here. You know what I'm saying? So it was a different energy as far as it was beautiful mm -hmm. and, and I was real um, I was real happy about not having to be in the fucking cold anymore right and and I remember as a kid and I think we came out here um, in like January you know what I'm saying and it was fucking like the beginning of January and it was at nighttime and it was fucking warm right and I'm like damn like, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, this is the shit, you know what I'm saying? Like, like it, I couldn't believe it. So I was just just happy to get away from the struggle of being in the projects and being in the fucking, uh, 
being, you know, around all the violence and drugs and bullshit, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But, you know, I had a, um, like two different sides of life. Like my mom was in the fucking projects, but my dad and my mom wasn't together. But I used to always go to my dad's house and he had fucking bitches everywhere, you know what right. I'm saying? So he used to take me to their houses and one of them, one of his girls was like real close to me, like a mom, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So she kind of raised me too and and it was like, it was a different way of life. Like I go to the projects, but then I go to my, my people over here and they got fucking goldfish in the backyard and fucking shit swimming and all kind of dogs <laughs> and and it's like it, I was getting like a different kind of life like I would go with her for the summer and she'll be fucking flying me to New York and shit like that so I was just learning how to travel and mm -hmm. doing different shit with you know like a like a kind of like a stepmom that was basically she showed me how to put my fucking shoes on the right feet you mm. know what I'm saying so you know um I don't know. I had a I had a real good life as a kid, but it was crazy that I seen the two different sides of like I seen like how say like um, I try to put it in a picture like this and the projects, the motherfuckers, uh, the fix the shit up. You know what I'm saying? Put brand new swings and motherfucking balls for the kids to kick and fucking. Oh, the uh, tether ball? Yeah, you know, <laughs> sliding boards, yep. go around and shit, looking right. like a candy cane with the red and white paint on it. And you put all this pretty shit up in the projects, and then you got grown-ass motherfuckers on the swings, kicking the ball and fucking the <laughs> shit up for the kids. Right. It's like, goddamn. So it's like, and then, all right, say like my, my parents have bought me a bike. And I got a brand new bike with the see-through goddamn, you know, uh, uh, chain guard and right. the this chrome brand new shit in the summer. Niggas ain't getting no gifts in the summer. They gotta wait till yeah. Christmas to get some shit. But I'm fucking. I take that bike or I keep it at my my stepmom's house, and that motherfucker stays brand new for a long <laughs> ass time, right? Yeah. I take that motherfucker <clears throat> to the projects. Two weeks. That motherfucker is either stolen or, or torn up. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. To right. where it's like, man. So it's like it's a it's a fucking um, a mentality like like motherfuckers will tear down shit no matter what. If if that that's the you know what I'm saying. If that's the mentality. Like, right. And then you know the one of the uh, that's of course a terrible reality, but at the same time. As with a lot of people, you were able to look at music in particular and yeah. use that to help get yourself out yeah. and, and make things better. So for you, as we've talked about a lot over the years, the message was very important yeah. for you as far as writing, storytelling, profanity, all these different things. Yeah, to see all <laughs> these different walks of life and then to isolate myself to be able to write. I used to lock myself in the bathroom for hours and hours and hours and shit, you know what I'm saying? And you know my sisters and them whatever be mad telling my mom and cussing me out and shit and, but that was my way to get away from everybody you know what i'm saying mm. and concentrate on trying to come up with creative shit mm -hmm. you know so um you know not to take nothing away from nobody rapping and that shit but you know as a lyricist to play with words is what i was you know it's what i just grew up on is, is trying to say something that people gonna be like rewind that shit you know what i'm saying that was clever, you know what I mean? Like, or not just to put a fucking record together and it has no thought, you know what I'm saying? Or I didn't put any type of thought into it. Mm -hmm. Like with me now, I see that I like to take the beats home and live with them as opposed to trying to think of something creative to say in the studio. Gotcha. You know what I'm saying? So it's a different way for me. And then I come to the studio now and kill shit and have like six songs knocked out in a few hours. Mm -hmm. You know what well, I think one of the my favorite records of yours very early on was yeah. Lokes on His Own because yeah, yeah. that showed yeah. one it's a very creative story but it also shows the different side yeah. of what being in the life and being in the streets is about. Yeah. So for you when you're able to add those extra dimensions to those type of songs mm -hmm. very early in your career, of yeah. course. Yeah. Like, what did you notice about that song when you were writing it? Did it feel different? Did it, like, the reaction when you started playing it for people or when you were recording it? Like, what was the difference? Um, I wanted to make a song that, you know, even if it's not being incarcerated, it's, it's like people being away from home 
Mm. And and um, like you can be in college or wherever, you know what I'm saying? And you're away from home and you, and, and um, you know, your people are footing the bill for you to be in college and you can't call home as much, you know, and your family's not accepting those calls as much or whatever, you know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. it's like just being away from your family and, and having to, you know, call home, everybody can relate to that. Right. You know, and um, in jail is definitely a, a crazy situation because the um, the system and how it's set up, they charge you so much money to even talk to your family and shit. You know what I'm saying? It's like basically you know, they running a racket in the jail. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's like this, you will be surprised how much it costs. It's very expensive. Yeah. A minute to talk yeah. to someone, call and collect. You know what I'm saying? So, um you know, I just wanted to put that out there and, and, and you know, and let people feel that. And that was one of my favorite songs on, on my first album. Yeah. You know, it was the Locust on his own. You know what I'm saying? Take a ride. Yeah. yeah. And, and I think, too, with that, mm -hmm. one of the things that I think is great about a lot of your music, especially yeah. that song, but is that you're able to, like, look at things from the streets and, mm -hmm. and gang life and stuff, not from just the... I'm bigger and better than you, but it's yeah. like the emotional side. Like exactly. how Scarface does, Ice Cube does, yeah. all the greats that, mm -hmm. you know, the great artists and gangster rap are showing them multiple sides of things. Yeah. So yeah. for you as a writer, uh -huh. why is that so important? I mean, just to put, put yourself on everyone else's level to let people know that you're human. You know what I'm saying? You got family, you got friends, mm -hmm. you got feelings just like everybody else. You know what I'm saying? It's not... You know, because some people tend to forget that or they want to glorify the finer things. And it's way more people that's not, that's without, you know what I mean? It's way more have nots, you know what I'm saying? Right. So it's like you really, you know, letting people relate to you. Like, man, he has struggles too. He went through things and people can relate to it. Because a lot of times I run into people and they say they fans of, you know, the music and everything. Um, they be like, man, your music got me through a certain time in my life. Or mm -hmm. some people be like, man, I went and rolled on some motherfuckers back in this whoop de whoop. And I'm like, God damn, but damn, like, you know, um, you know, when you touch somebody like that with your music, man, it, it means a lot to me to, to know that. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. I'm just thankful that, um, you know, at, at this stage right now, I'm getting, a, you know, a second opportunity to come back to the game on a much more, you know, bigger level than even when I was on Def Jam, you know what I'm saying? Right. So I'm just I'm just uh, excited about my future, man, and, and looking forward to, you know, seeing the people and getting out here and, and touching the people again and, and, you know, rapping and having fun on stage. Um, we did a release party the other night for, uh, for, this, for the Broken Ground Project. And um, just the energy out there, man, with me and X performing, it, it was crazy. And, um, and I see what I have to do. I see my, my strategy is in performing now. Mm -hmm. And um, my shows are just gonna get better and better and better to people are gonna be like, this motherfucker is, 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 is gonna be crazy. So I'm just looking forward to just putting the work in mm -hmm. and um, you know, just living life to the fullest, man, and enjoying every day and um, you know, never taking my opportunities and, and just, you know, just, um, acting like anybody get these type of opportunity. You know what I'm saying? Right. I got to make the most of it and appreciate it and, and keep a humble attitude, you know what I'm saying? And um, get get back to the top of, you know, what I'm known to be doing, you know what I'm saying? Get back to the top of performing and being an artist and an entrepreneur and, and the whole nine, you know? Yeah, and with Broken Ground, of course, that's the introduction of James Savage, but, yeah. and <clears throat> really with working with Open Bar, but, I think it's also important for people to understand and realize mm -hmm. a lot of the big things that you've done through your career. So I did want to get to that too a little bit, yeah. which like, of course you were signed with J Master J to get yeah. you to Def Jam, Yeah, being on the show soundtrack and all those different things. Mm -hmm. What now looking back, and unfortunately J Master J is not with us anymore, yeah. but what some important things you learned along the way from him? Oh uh, man, it's it's crazy that I remember when I when I first started, I was basically a um, young kid with with um, a manager, and then um, somehow I made the decision like to go with up to New York and just stay up there with Jam Master J and and learn, you know what I'm saying, the craft of of putting records together. 
Okay. You know what I'm saying? So when I went to New York, um, that's when we basically built our bond is when I got to really know him. You know what I'm saying? And we got mm -hmm. to know each other and hung out. And he actually had me at his mom's house in Queens. And I was basically... Uh, you know, hanging out with the cats and queens, shooting basketball and washing my clothes at the laundromat, you know what I'm saying? It was <laughs> real, real hood shit, you know what I'm saying? And, and mm -hmm. um, I was hanging out with his sister, um, Nita and Marvin, and just, you know, Trick and all the guys in Queens, you know what I'm saying, that was, you know, basically had my back. Man, it was cracking out there. And it, I can tell the energy that, that with him being around, it was like, Nigga, we'd be cracking at the barbershop, and then after the hours, nigga, they'd close the barbershop down. Nigga, the stripper bitches come, and we get to turning <laughs> up with the Hennessy. And they yeah. like, Jay, yo, out here cracking with us. You know what I'm saying? So it was a different energy out there in Queens when Jam Master Jay was out, man. And mm -hmm. it was crazy to, um, you know, to see him go like that, man, to see him murdered like that. And um, I know it just took the heart out of, out of, you know, Hollis. You know what I'm saying? That shit took right. the heart out of Hollis, Queens, man. But, you know, rest in peace to Jay, man. And um, I got a lot of love for Jay, and I'm going to just keep pushing, you know, and make him proud. You know what I'm saying? Right. That's what it is. Be sure to check out the history of gangster rap by Soren Baker. He's official. History of gangster rap features exclusive interviews with Ice T, Snoop Dogg, MC Ren, the DOC, and dozens of others. The history of gangster rap, a definitive look at how Los Angeles changed rap forever. In Los Angeles, the streets definitely set the tone of the hip hop music. I'm 19, I got a $50,000 car. My whole angle always was I'll be street, but I will always tell you the horrors that go along with this life. It will be penalties and casualties for just wearing the wrong color in somebody's neighborhood. And once gangster rap made it from the streets to the TV, the genre exploded. What's that, five on your TV back with that WA? Yo MTV, it just catapulted us from being local heroes to national gangbang rappers. The history of gangster rap discusses it all from 1980 up till today. There's always gonna be shit happening in the streets. You know what I mean? So it's always gonna be something to talk about. The history of gangster rap in stores now.